A couple of friends and I traveled to the heritage town of Ta'al recently. Founded in 1572, Ta'al marked its 450th anniversary with a festival called El Pasubat. The three-day event featured a Visita de las Casas where 15 ancestral houses opened their doors to the public on April 29. Hi, Audi. Come in, welcome, welcome. Come in. Also known as Bahay na Bato, these old houses have two levels. The lower level, made of stone or adobe, was used for carriages, storage for rice, bodega, and servants' quarters, while the second floor, made of wood and accessed by a grand staircase, was the main living area. Wow, and so we have this beautiful house, and this is the master of the house. Hi, Audi. Welcome to Villa Tortuga. Kano ka nakatagal dito, Lito? Maybe around 10 to 12 years. I don't know the exact date. But uh, I found it by serendipity. Mm. Uh, out of the blue, I just said, I wanted that old house in Taal. Siguro naman, there's one for rent for me to use. Uh -huh. So I just went and out of the blue, I asked my best friend from La Salle, a classmate, si Benji Oben, who out of the blue, his sister-in-law, pala, niece ng may-ari ng bahay. And oh. who recently inherited it. The first thing that I asked was, ano mukha ng bahay? He told me, mukhang bahay ni Rizal. I, I'm gonna look at it. I wanna see it. That's it. And it sold me. And it was bare bones, walang laman. It was bare bones, nothing inside. It was dark and dirty. But, one thing I noticed, everything was intact. The doors, the ceiling, the floor, everything was there. Kumbaga, very minor yung mga ginawa additions. Uh, mga plywood, plywood which could easily be taken away. And the house structure, the bones were there. So like the floors and the ceilings? As and the doors. Original the ato. Original. And when was this made? Do you, do you know? Uh, recently, we've been backtracking. No? Nung una, sinasahe ko lagi, just to be safe, 1880s, 1890s. But it's not. It's earlier. Oh. Kasi we tried to look at the, the family tree of the original owners. Uh, it was built by Francisco Paulino Gahol, whom we used to confuse with Francisco Gahol II. Eh, Francisco Gahol II was born in 1870 and it was built by his grandfather so, so that was earlier. Francisco Paulino Gaon so if he was born 1870 so ang tatay niya mo na 20 30 years earlier so 1850 siguro naman napatayo na ng lolo niya so I think safe 1840, 1850, just to be safe. I hear this is the one, the oldest, if not one, uh, if one of the oldest, if not the oldest house yes. here in Tal. Uh, it has uh, basic architectural similarities to the Marcela Agoncillo Museum. If you look at the interior, pareho yung arches namin, pareho yung plano. Ngayon Lito, I've known you for so long and you've been collecting antiques all these years. So para kang nakahanap ng lugar to finally be a showroom to all your collections, are most of these from your collection? Actually, yes. I've been collecting ever since 10 years old, diba? Kaya <laughs> lahat tayo, na, nayaya ako mangulita. But I buy and sell, I trim down my collection. What I don't like, what I don't need, I ano, but I continually buy and find this i finally found a place where i can put all of them in one uh place na talagang bagay mm -hmm. well for those of the, our viewers who don't know lito owns camp suki which is known for all the costume rentals so madalas ka naalala kita uh, we were just in our early 20s. Madalas thematic ang mga parties mo sa bahay mo. Well, up to now, it is still thematic. And the one thing that uh, came out from this Audi, parang naging extension ng Camp Suki. The people can come here, they can wear period costumes, especially Filipiniana, and they can have photo shoots around the house wearing the costume. So yung costume, nagkaroon ng ambiance na background. At the same time, right now, we're trying to develop it into a, a private uh, events place wherein you can really 
go back in time aside from the costume yung ambiance talaga is really from the era and right now it's inspired from the gilded age downton abbey yung mga time na yon bridgerton you can have that party easily here just come in your costume it you will blend in the interior or sometimes they can rent costumes from you yes. ahead of time and then you can take care of food and everything we catering cater, and all uh, special uh, foods uh, depending on uh, what the customer wants but that's the thing it comes with the entire ambiance package okay can you tour us around the house come on <laughs> this is my wall of access stores old pictures from the family which i've saved luckily meron pa kami so ilang, gener ilang generations to represented? Uh, three generations on this wall. And when I bring my apos and my nephews and nieces, I tell them, this is your heritage. Hindi ka ini sa babae ni, for decoration. But this one is really of the family. Wow. Kinakatakot ng lola ko. Being the only son, the eldest son, baka dodaling sa China. Siya. <laughs> Pwede pang ibalik siya doon? Hindi, para kunin, para mag maging Chinese. Oh. Kaya takot na takot ang lola ko dati. Kasi, Saan kinuha ang pangalan na Perez? Kung Chinese? Anong original Chinese name? King. King? King. Uh, the Perez came from the Ninong at their wedding. So it was Perez. not their name, inadapt lang nila. It's very... Very typical of that time and until now, kung sino yung Nino, kinukuha yung name nung ano. But they still have, they, ang Chinese name is Antonio Perez King eh. In Chinese, parang Kia Ko Kai. Who, hindi ko na alam kung saan ang relation. But I still have some cousins na nakakasabi kung saan. But from Amoy, China originally. Lito fed us lunch, but what made the experience unique was eating using antique ware. And then it was off to visit other old houses. We visited Villa Severina, owned by architect Robert Arambulo. Robert is not a native of Taal, but charmed by its history and nostalgia, he decided to make Taal his main residence. Unlike Lito, who filled his Tortuga home with antiques, Robert employed adaptive reuse, meaning the exterior of the house is preserved while the interior is more eclectic. Like mid-century uh, furniture. So mid-century and Asian. So that's the, that's the mix that I have here. Which reminds me of, my, of the black and white houses in Singapore. I noticed a unique cover on the bed and was told it is a local weave which Robert is promoting from three towns away called Ibaan. It was a pretty hot afternoon so Robert treated us to his own special halo halo. Next we moved to Bahay Asinas. Visitors were greeted by Arondalia. I found out that the house was recently purchased by Pastor Ed Lapis of Day by Day Ministries. May I vlog you, oh Pastor Ed? Pastor Ed has always championed Filipino arts and culture and incorporated it in their worship. I can't think of a better person to take on an old, rundown house like Bahay Asinas and bring it back to life. I really appreciate the fact that all these hosts of these houses took the time to make sure their staff wore Filipiniana. I noticed that the old houses in Taal are modest in size compared to the ancestral homes in Iloilo, Negros, or Ilocos. But the craftsmanship of the architecture and interior design are nevertheless masterful. I've never seen a cabinet like this. Wow. The doors are beautiful. 
So this is a persiana. Uh, you can from Persia. So you use the serring bowl to turn it, and it will open slightly. So air will come in, but the sun will not glare you. And for kasi nga ano sila di ba uh, Arab country, dapat hindi nakikita ang woman. So pagka sa minsan ganyan, <laughs> hindi siya kita. Ah, <laughs> pala yun. Oo, ganyan ganyan lang. Ayun, eh, foggy. Mulawi. 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 Or Mulawi. No, here in the island would be Mulawi. 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 But definitely, which is actually... The design of the old houses really took into consideration the Philippine weather. There was always room for air and cross ventilation. I also really liked how they repurposed the rooms and look at this beautiful dining set and the intricate mantel. Look at the old style cookware in Rizal's days. these houses always had verandas. Pastor, thank you so much. The next ancestral house we went to was the wedding gift house of the Vilivicentios. Hello, I hope you don't mind me. Shooting while we're. <laughs> well, I love the fact that I'm now identified as a vlogger and no longer as an actor. Now, this is a real ancestral house, meaning the furniture is largely original, passed down to the heirs. But they also sought the help of historian and antiquaire Sonny Tino in the early 2000s to help restore the wedding gift back to its old glory. This was made. Custom made especially for the visit of F.B. Harrison to Taal. Oh wow! In 1906 or seven, when he for this house. inaugurated inaugurated the water system and the electrical system for Taal. Yes, and he was invited to be the one to inaugurate because F.B. Harrison, yeah, F.B. Harrison, because the son-in-law, si Vicente Ilustre, was a commissioner at that time. He was commissioned under the Harrison. Anak siya. He's son-in-law of the owners of these two houses. Mm. So, they basically dressed up the house. Kaya marami kami early American period pieces. Like this one, and that one is American period. All the rest are more or less Victorian furniture and all the kind of stuff. But there's only two furniture that's really American because of every other. This one and that one. You know, American. So, are Art Nouveau ba siya? This art is Art Nouveau. Nouveau. But art. this is a very beautiful, rare piece. Kasi, who painted this? It was Emilio Alvero. Alvero. Kasi, Can you educate us? What is Batangas Uno? Kasi, when they did the uh, itong mga mess altar, there, there is an artisan. Well-known mm -hmm. artisan. No? Na talagang, you know, he started the design. The design. Kasi, they got it from the Chinese, actually. Yung design na ito was... Very oriental. Oriental yung design. But this particular one was very specially made for this. Batangas Uno was the name, artisan, pangalan niya doon. Batangas Uno, mm. we don't know the name. But this was specially for this house. If you look at the Pina, Calado, no? look at our Calado there. It's the same. It's, it's, like, same. A, it's a, same. like a they seal. Also this. They also made also very, very good. From Batikuling. Uh, this is actually original to this house. Original made to this house. Wow. From, uh, I don't know who made this. Oh. <laughs> But fabulous. But, fabulous. But, this is but, but, 19th century definitely. Oh, but look at the vestment. Uh -oh. Gold and gold. It's gold. Gold wow. thread. Gold thread. The original in the mint. Original in the mint. Pero ito pinagawa ko ng replica kasi the original. Nasa uh, nakasredi ko. Uh, Pero ivory pa rin siya. Yeah, it's still ivory, but that's a replica. The original is much nicer. Mahirap i display. Oh, oh, kasi yeah. we just leave it here. So, bakit may mga damit dito ngayon? Steve De Leon. What, why are there dresses here? When, you know why? This is called the Villa Vicencio 
wedding gift house. This house uh, was built by Eulalio Villio Vicencio for his new bride, Lisel, Liseria Marella, in around 1870s. So the original house they had was beside, but he had this built specially for her as a wedding gift. So we call this the Villa Vicencio Wedding Gift House. Thus, we opted to put wedding gowns by Philippine designers as an exhibit to complement the wedding house. Got it. Lito tells me that the lady of the house, Gliseria, was widowed early. She was a staunch supporter of the Katipuneros. As a matter of fact, while holding dinners and having Spanish government officials as guests in her dining room, she had the rebels hiding in some secret place under the house. And curious story. Which one though? Send it here. Modern baby is a pack rat. Alam mo naman yung uh -huh. kanilang generation. Uh -huh. Bago na bago ka. She was living in Old Manila, sa Malate. Nung namatay siya dahil nakabalot kung ano-ano. Isa sa isa yan, nakabalot. Nung siya ng year na yan, binuo nila. Nakabalot lang sa garahe. Wow, na-save nila, no? Ah, na-save. This is, it's, it's so unique. I know, it's We were supposed to check out the main house, the original Villa Vicencio home, but it had already been closed for the day. Lito, nakapunta na tayo dito. Nung nandito si na Freddy. It was 5 p.m. and we needed to head back to Tortuga for dinner. But Lito pointed out this rather unique and intricate balcony, which is not typical of houses in those days. But of course, the ironwork on the gates were always marvelous. So we're walking around, uh, just checking out the old houses. Uh, so what do you think so far? Smells like tapa. Yes, it smells ah, like smells good, whatever that is. It smells like on the top of the So, um, really nice the, the, the drive here was about four hours, but I think it was worth the drive, no? Yeah. But it would have been shorter if we did get lost. <laughs> Thank you, Waze. No Waze. Of course, the highlight of the Taal tour was the grand dinner hosted by Lito. The night's theme was Colonial American, specifically the Thomasites, and Lito provided all his guests with costumes. A little uh, presentation from Villa uh, Tortuga to inspire Taali Wood. Para mong pisan natin yung Taali Wood. And these are local talent. Taal is a choice location when movies need to shoot something of that era, like the movie Larawan, which was shot at the original Villa Vicencio house. But for that night, Lito prepared a live performance featuring local talent, and the theme was vaudeville, the kind of entertainment that was born out of the American colonial period. A pleasant surprise, especially for us theater people, is that Lito converted one of the spaces in the lower floor into a theater.
invite everyone to come in. That evening, Lito invited fellow members of the Taal Active Alliance League, an organization of homeowners and stakeholders of the historical houses in Taal. And their mission is heritage preservation and tourism. Have a taste of nostalgia. Experience genteel living of the golden age. It is very much still alive at Taal.